Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm John Chapman. I'm 94 years old, and I've been to Pearl Harbor, Guadalcanal. I've been all over the Pacific. Um, but I'll tell you about Pearl Harbor. I think that's the main thing. I was on the West Virginia, and um, it was Sunday morning, and uh, I was supposed to get ready to go ashore because I was a lifeguard at the Royal Hawaiian. And um, the first bomb hit us about 8 o'clock that morning. And it hit a forward. I had my whites on, and it knocked at me on the deck and made me kind of greasy. So I thought, well, I'll have to change before they let me off the ship. So the next thing I know, we have a second bomb hit just a little bit further than the first one. The first one hit right up on the bow. And we thought maybe another ship was coming alongside and tying up. So the carpenter mate looked out the port. And um, about that time, another bomb torpedo hit. And it pushed him almost through the porthole. And he broke both shoulders. We had to pull him back out of there, and um, general quarters went. So my general was on the third deck. I was on the first deck there, though. So I proceeded down to the um, to the third deck to my paddle station. And when I got down there, a torpedo hit just before I arrived there, and it flooded that whole compartment down there, and. Um, the water was up to my knees when we went in there and we closed all the hatches and it started rising very fast. And I thought, well, this is going to be where we're going to be buried down here because um, once all the hatches are closed and x-ray is closed, you cannot open any hatches unless it, Captain the Lord had to be open. So we had 10 men down there and five men couldn't get down. They were trapped the second deck and the first deck. And uh, the water started uh, coming into her. It was already wrapped to my waist. And um, I wasn't a phone, supposed to be on the phone man, but he never arrived down there. So the first class told me to take over the sound power phones. And I got him on and told him we were ready to answer any calls. And uh, I knew the uh, man in Central down there, his name was Jimmy Lyons. He and I were very good friends. And I asked Jim, I says, uh, what's the procedure now? He says, um, we're, we're, we're trying to look to find out where we we're at. We had, uh, by that time, we had nine torpedoes on the port side. That's a lot of torpedoes, and the ship was sinking very heavily to port about 45 degrees and um, that kind of the shift of the water on the side so we were kind of walking on the bulkheads sideways there and um, I told uh, uh, Jim I says uh, the water is already up to our necks right now and um, wh what should we do he said well Oh, but we're going to counter flood the ship. We have to open all the counter flooding valves on the starboard side and bring the ship back up because the Tennessee was alongside of us and we were pulling the Tennessee over and she could not bear her guns when the plane's coming in. So the captain told him to cut all the lines on the, between the West Virginia and the Tennessee and men were trying to get over on the Tennessee on these lines, and they were cutting them off, and the men were falling between the two ships. Well, those men down there, they're going to get squashed when those two ships came together. They had a big armor plate on each side, and if they couldn't get them out of that uh, armor plate, the armor plate was 12 inches thick on the outside, and they could get up on the armor plate, they could wouldn't get killed down there. So I was still down below and the water was up to our necks 
and we're hanging on the beams on the overhead. And I told Jim, when are they going to ban the ship? He said, well, the captain's been killed. And the executive officer's taken command, and he hasn't said anything about abandoning ship. Well, I said, I don't know how we're going to get out of here. We've got water above us and all around of us, and the port side is open, and we're, we're just open to the sea. And um, he said, well, they'll give a word pretty soon. So uh, I told, told Jim, I says, um, we're not going to last down here. We're going to be... Uh, stuck down here, and uh, about that time, uh, I said, what should we do? So I was, everybody was saying their prayers down there, and um, I, my mother told me if I ever in trouble that I should recite the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, so I start going through that, and um, as I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, there were fear no evil for the hell out with me. And all of a sudden, I heard a voice say, take charge. I said, Jim, what do you mean take charge? He said, I never said that. Well, I heard it. He said, you know what to do. So I got to thinking. I said, God must be talking to me. So I told the men, if you listen to me, I think I can get you out of here because I used to weigh all the fire extinguishers on the ship. I know every compartment on here and how to get there. If you listen to me, I'll get you out of here. So I had 10 men down there and they were all older than me. I was only 19. And um, they said, John, if you can do that, he said, we sure to appreciate it. So I said, the lights were out, but on the bulkheads, they had lanterns that were on. They were on. I said, well, get those lanterns off the bulkhead. We need it because we have to move maneuvers through some, a lot of compartments are full of water. So we come out. I said, I'll call next door at the compartment up on the stern of us and find out how high the water over there because it, we could not open the hatches with the water there, which all the pressure could never open them. So I said, we get the pressure on the other side, we can open those hatches. So I go over there and they said the water was about two feet above the hatch. Okay, I said, we've got to go a little bit more, another two or three feet will equalize the pressure on there, we can open this hatch. So a few more minutes, it raised pretty fast. And I said, okay, we're going to go. So we'll open these hatches, and I said, follow me. So we went right through that hatch. Of course, the water went, it went through there. It just pushed us through and full of the compartment up there. And it got up there, and they had the same situation there. So there was one more hatch behind them. And uh, we had to find out how much water was there. So it was just at the top of the hatch. He said, well, let's try and pull on it. And we pulled on that hatch. We got through, and the water went through. And um, back there was where all the freezers were on the ship, and they were making a break out for Sunday, Sunday dinner. And there was one hatch back there, I know, that that's one I was looking for. It ran up about 30 feet up in the, up through that hatch, and there was a... Um, uh, ha a, a line coming down that they lower all the food down. We never got food, meat in boxes. Everything came in a half a cow or, or they were just, cut, all the animals were cut in half. And the, of course the butchers had to cut them aboard the ship when they feed them. It wasn't, that wasn't cut into pieces. So, um, that hatch was open up there, and that line was down there. It was about as big as my finger. I said, why don't you climb those lines and get up there? These sailors down there were only aboard about a week. They're young recruits, and there was one first-class butcher down there, and he didn't know how to cl climb a, ha a ladder. He weighed almost 200 pounds. So I said, well, I'll go over there. 
pull that line down and stand on it. And I says, when I was in high school, I could climb 30 feet, ring the bell, and come down before the men could start. So I hand hand over the hand, got up there, and the bombs were still. They were, they were still in the first first attack. There was about 300 planes just flying every direction up there. I don't know how they ever maneuver without hitting each other. So I looked out the hatch and I, the number four turret was right right behind us. We were on the number three turret. And I saw there was a line, uh, a, a big card when that wrapped around a four by four. They used that to, um, when we had two planes aboard, they could land and hook their hook on that hook and they could lift the planes and put them on the top of the hatch on top of the turrets and um, I thought well I could use that cargo head there so I went out and uh, I, there was a bugler out there and I had, didn't have a knife and I said you got got a knife on you he gave me the knife and we rolled uh, that four by four and the, the, the cargo went it on and I started cutting the lines off of it, and my hand was bleeding because the plastic handles on those navy knives are not very strong. So, but my hand was bleeding pretty bad. So I said, over in that bulkhead, there's a fire axe, and bring that over here. So the bugler brought it over, and we start chopping that carbonate off. And I took the carbonate and dropped it down the hatch. The hatch was about five foot by four foot. And we put the net, netting on the on the bolts there, and it was about eight feet from. They couldn't quite read them. I said, "Well, we'll have to leave each other, get get them up, and start coming up that cargo net." So they start doing that, and I told them to get under number four turret. The turret had about four feet of space under the turret as it swung, so they would be protected. So they got them out there, and they said, "There's." five men down there with broken legs and arms. And I said, well, there's a stoke stretcher over there. Get that stoke stretcher in here. We dropped it down there and they put them up. We got them all up. And I put them all under number four to it because the planes were just strafing in the deck. And uh, when I was down there, the hatch in that over uh, overhang of the turret opened up and these five men came out of it and they said a bomb just came down into the, right through the hatch. It was it came apart, and there and they were so scared to death, so they just ran and jumped right off the ship. And uh, I said, <laughs> if that bomb had come through, it would have killed us all down there. So I think God was with me all the time. So, well, the first opportunity I got alongside, and I saw a lot of boats out there and I was said ask him to come on in to get the men but they wouldn't come in so I said well I'm a good swimmer I'm going to go get one of those boats out here so I dived in the water and there was had about six inches of oil all over and they were, it was on fire so I had to go into that oil and came up when I did a boat for a motor lodge from the California just came around the edge here and saw me and they came over and put a boat hook on. I had so much oil, I almost slipped off that boat hook. And I asked him when he got it in, I said, why'd you back down so fast? He says, take a look on your left. Because the um, another battleship was coming in, it would have run right over you. The battleship was uh, the... Uh, 